everyone, this is Jillian Graham with another tutorial. This one is on sharing your Google Slides with students. As you can see, there are lots of different options and the one that you choose is really going to depend on your audience and your goal. My goal here today is to help you understand each of them so you know what functionality is available to you. The first one I'm going to go over with you is the Force Preview link. This one's great because it updates automatically compared to a PDF. Um, it maintains all of your functionality with your hyperlinks, your GIFs, and your audio. We have some options um, that we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at slash preview, and that will auto advance if a student clicks on the play button, or a preview minimal version that will avoid the auto advancing, and it has a couple other things um, that are helpful as well. To show you the functionality of the force preview and the preview minimal links, I am going to use this virtual classroom scavenger hunt that was created by one of our members, Sarah Anderson. Our Facebook group is Bitmoji Craze for Educators and she graciously shared this with all of her members. And the setup is fantastic. So she has everything hyperlinked um, to these other pages or different um, YouTube videos that she wants her kids to find and these over here are skipped so that when you present it and they hit play if they hit play it's not going to take them anywhere except for just this slide so let me show this to you so I'm gonna go to share and get this link sharing turned on here and you always want to make sure that it's set to can view And then I'm going to open up an incognito window. And this is a great way, I'll actually show you how to do this real quick. This is a great way to test your links if you're not comfortable with sharing. So you can go to the three dots here and click new incognito window. I actually use this shortcut, control shift N a lot. So that pulls up an incognito window and then you won't be signed into anything so you can actually see what will happen. So what I'm going to do is take the end of this link right here from edit the end and I'm going to replace that with just the word preview. So if students have that link it's going to open up as a presentation so they can't see all the slides off to the side here. Hyperlinks still work, everything still works. She has nifty little links back to the classroom so they don't have to hit the back button in their browser. They could still hit play, but since she has the rest of her, of her slides hidden, it's not going to do anything. If I click on an area that is not hyperlinked, it's not going to jump to the next slide because she has hidden the rest of those slides. Um, and then the only thing is with this version, students could still go to any of the skipped slides if they wanted to. So they could click right here on the down arrow and they could go to whatever slide they wanted to if they got tired of clicking for the clicking through all the stuff. Um, also another thing that they're going to be able to get to is they can still open it in the editor by clicking on this clog cog wheel. So make sure again that you have changed your link sharing to can view regardless of whether you're sharing it as a preview link or a force a copy link or whatever. They could always change the end of the slide to get back to this. So now I'm going to show you the preview minimal link. So again, taking out that end of that hyperlink and changing it this time is going to be a little bit more to type in preview question mark rm equals minimal. Again, a little bit more to type in, but I think definitely worth it. So what this is gonna do is gonna give you the presentation. Everything still works, students can't edit it, and there's no menu bar that pops up down here. So they can't even press play to start auto advancing if you haven't hidden the rest of your slides. Um, they can't skip through the slides and pick whatever slide they want to, even if it's hidden. They literally have to um, go through your slide exactly how, or through your presentation exactly how you want them to. So it really restricts their access um, to this. But I feel like I still have to point out again that they could change the end of this to 
edit if they are savvy and most students are and get back to your presentation. Now let's talk about publishing to the web. Publishing to the web creates a lightweight web page that is easily accessible across all devices and multiple people can access it at one time. It updates automatically just like your preview links do um, and your hyperlinks, your GIFs, your audio, all will still function. It will auto advance by clicking play. So if you want that as an option, it's a good way to go. And no one can get back to your um, slide file using this option. So let's take a look at this one in published mode. So I have here, I just linked her to the next slide and then I have a slide hidden just so you can see this functionality. So you're gonna go to file, publish to the web and you can choose how you want it to auto advance every second or every minute or anything in between. Um, and then you'll want to click start slideshow as soon as the player loads if you want it to auto advance um, or if you only want that to happen if the students hit play then don't select that. Unfortunately they're always going to have the option to click play. If you want to restrict this to your domain you can by clicking this um, and then you can get an, you will be able to get an embed link as well when you publish and the embed link go ahead and publish it the embed link is great for embedding into a website or using on different platforms so I'm going to grab this link here and I'm going to open it again in an incognito window So here's what published to the web looks like. It's an actual web page and you do have some options. You can still get to whatever slides you want to. You can advance to any slide that is not skipped or hidden and you can auto advance by clicking play. So you'll see it's it plays to the next slide or advances to the next slide but then it stops there because the third slide I have hidden. Hyperlinks still work. I can still get to my third slide that I have hidden by clicking on my hyperlinked object. Um, I actually have a hyperlink here to my YouTube channel, so you can click that. You can still, all the links still work. GIFs still work. Audio hmm. still works. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so this is another great tool to use. And then also notice that they cannot open this in editor mode so they can't get back to your slide, your actual Google slide presentation. So before I show you how to use force preview or links or publish to the web links in Google Classroom, I'm just going to go over these three briefly. If you download something as a PDF, your hyperlinks will function but auto, audio and animation will not work. Also, if you need to make any updates, you will have to re-download and reshare. Downloading as a JPEG or a PNG, basically nothing works. <laughs> it's just a picture, which sometimes there's going to be situations where you want that. And then adding your slide from your drive, I'll show you how to do this in Google Classroom. It's quick and easy, but this is how it's going to open when you do that. They're going to open directly in Google Slides, so it's great if you have an activity where you want them to have editing access or if you don't care if they're going to see the different slides and you want them to be able to skip around. Okay so here we are in Google Classroom and I'm going to go to the Classwork tab and I'm just going to create material and you will not be able to add a force preview link um, this way because Google will override it. But what you can do is shorten the URL, which I have done, and add it that way. And that will keep the force preview or the force preview minimal version intact. And this is what students will open when you post it. This is the force preview minimal version where there is no um, menu bar at the bottom. So you do have to shorten it um, so that Google Classroom doesn't override it. Another way that you can do it is to just post it in the description if you don't want to bother with shortening the URL. Just post it there instead. Change the end. And 
and post it that way and then they can just access it by clicking the link here instead of clicking here. But I do like to shorten the URL and use this because then they get a little preview of um, the presentation that you're linking. Another um, way to post slides to Google Classroom is using the publishing link. So I'm going to go back and grab that. So if you want to get your link again, just go to File, Publish to the Web. It's already published, so I'm just going to copy this again. And in order to use the publish link, you just add the link. That's it. There's no overriding that Google Classroom will do. Um, when you post this, it will give students the direct link to that published web page. Another option that you can do is just posting the um, Google Slides directly through your Google Drive. Typically, you're going to do this if it is something that you want the students to turn in or if you want them to edit it and turn it in. So if you're attaching, let's say it's an activity that they actually interact with. So I'm just going to use this one here that I've used with my students before. And if you're doing it this way, post it as an assignment. And you can make a copy for each student if they need to be able to manipulate manipulate anything on the assignment. So then when you assign it this way, you're linking it directly from Google Slides or from your drive. And when they open it on their end from the student view, they're going to open their copy of it and then they'll be able to see the entire presentation and they can manipulate it however you need them to manipulate it and then they'll be able to turn it in. So I know that was a lot of information but I hope that helps you understand all of the options that are available to you. If you still have questions leave those in the comments and I will try my best to answer those. Thanks everyone!